What you can't see from this shot is that I'm wearing a shirt and also pyjama bottoms. <laughs> but it's all about range, you know? That, however, is not what I came in to talk about. Hello, welcome back to my second channel. Welcome back to Jack in the Books. What I would like to talk to you about today is Hay Festival, which I recently went to. I just got back. I was very, very lucky to be invited to Hay Festival by Sky Arts to record a TV show with them, which... <laughs> Just has blown my mind, I still can't get over that that is a real thing that I did. And then also by TikTok, who were very, very generous and kindly put me up and looked after me and took me to loads of really cool panels and events. And I'm so grateful. So thank you so much to the team at TikTok. But I did, of course, have to pay a little visit to the Hay Festival bookshop. And when I was there, I met so many of you guys, which was so fun. Bumping into you guys who were working in the bookshop, who were buying books in the bookshop, were working behind the till. It was just really, really cool. Um, to meet so many like-minded people, so thank you to everyone who said hello. Um, it makes my day every day. And so I have quite the haul, and I wanted to talk about them. Firstly, I have this book, which is Which Way to Anywhere by Cressida Cowell. This was actually given to me by the woman herself. In fact, this was inside, so I was doing my little presenting gig on the Big Hay Weekend with Sky Arts, and the guest that I was with was Cressida Cowell. And we spoke about book talk, about writing books, and she was so wonderful and brilliant and um, I also went to her talk the following day, and I was just in awe of her and the way that she interacts with her readers, who are mostly children, and the passion that she has for getting kids into reading and getting kids to be creative and use their imagination and to read and to write was... I was absolutely, like, entranced by just watching her do this talk. I felt so inspired. I think she's a really, really amazing person. Now, Cressida actually wrote the How to Train Your Dragon books. So she is an absolute powerhouse of an author, so so talented, and she actually signed my copy of her brand new book which comes out in September. She's written to Jack, Love, Rest of the Cowl, and then also she drew me this lovely little drawing of one of the characters in this new book. She just did that, standing there mid-conversation. She is awesome, and she also introduced me to Jacqueline Wilson, which was really cool. So, um, big love to Cressida. I think she's amazing and it was so nice to meet her. Let me tell you a little bit about this book. Hold on tight for an out of this world new adventure from number one best-selling author Cressida Cowell. It's an epic new series about unlikely heroes, the meaning of family, and how those who seem like their worlds apart might just be more similar than they think. So, which way to anywhere comes out in September. Next, I bought this book. This is called Idol. This is by Louise O'Neill, and this is in fact, a signed copy. I didn't meet Louise O'Neill, but there were some signed copies in the bookshop. And I'd actually heard about this book online because it's about an influencer. And as a content creator myself, I am very intrigued to see how influencers are being written about in kind of like literary fiction. So, follow your heart and speak your truth. For Samantha Miller's young fans, her girls, she's everything they want to be. She's an oracle, telling them, telling them how to live their lives, how to be happy, how to find and honour their truth. And her career is booming. She's just hit three million followers. Her new book, Chaste, has gone straight to the top of the bestseller list, and she's appearing at sellout events. Determined to speak her truth and bear all to her adoring fans, she's written an essay about her sexual awakening as a teenager with her female best friend, Lisa. She's never told a soul, but now she's telling the world. The essay goes viral. But then, years since they last spoke, Lisa gets in touch to say that she doesn't remember it that way at all. Her memory of that night is far darker. It's Sam's word against Lisa's. So who gets to tell the story whose truth is really a lie? You put yourself on the, that pedestal, Samantha. You only have yourself to blame. And it's described as utterly gripping and unsettling and darkly delicious. So that is Idol. Even the dog's excited. I don't know if you can hear him barking, but we're all excited to read this book. I might make a whole second channel video about this because I'm intrigued to see how it explores influencer culture, I guess. Um, so yeah, that's Idol by Louise O'Neill. Another book that I picked up is this one. This is Black British Lives Matter. This is edited by Lenny Henry and Marcus Ryder, but features a range of different authors. And I actually went to see Lenny Henry speak, um, and he was so inspiring and um, just speaks so brilliantly about the necessity for diversity and inclusivity in specifically children's fiction, but obviously this is a non-fiction book. Oh, published by Faber. I love Faber so much. I would love to be published by Faber. I'm just putting it out there. I'm speaking it into the universe. Anyway, um, yeah, Lenny Henry was just such a brilliant speaker. Also so funny. His talk was so impactful, um, and 
He's basically um, about to publish a children's book called The Boy With Wings, or it recently came out, or something. But um, it features um, mo a mostly uh, black cast of characters, but um, also a character in a wheelchair, and he basically was talking about how it's not performative, it's like the necessity to see people who children recognise, you know? Children being able to see themselves in the fiction that they're reading. Not just to tick a box, it's actually to empower other kids who may recognise themselves in that character. So I loved listening to him speak and I felt like the least I could do was go and buy one of his books and of course Black British Lives Matter is something that I am desperate to read. I've read a lot of books in the last five years about um, race, racism um, and being anti-racist, actively anti-racist, and I think this is also an important part of that reading to specifically focus on black British lives. Um, I also read Natives by Akala, which also similarly focused on kind of the black experience in Britain specifically, but this I think is also going to be really important and eye-opening. So, um, here Lenny Henry and Marcus Ryder introduce an essential collection of essays arguing how and why we need to fight for black lives to matter not just for black people, but for British society as a whole. Writing across a wide range of subjects and drawing on personal experience, all 19 writers explore the unique contributions, perspectives and importance of black Britons to the United Kingdom and beyond. The end result is both a celebration of black British lives and an urgent agenda setting manifesto for change. And it's actually also signed by Lenny Henry himself. So yeah, I think this is gonna be a really important read, um, which, I'm looking forward to. Next, my new book bestie, Elizabeth Day. This is a copy of her book Magpie, which I am actually currently working my way through and really enjoying, um, and Elizabeth very kindly signed my copy of it when I met her, and she was just great. I'm, I'm a new super fan of Elizabeth Day, I think she's so awesome. Um, I already admired what she did, but meeting her in person, I just, I think she's amazing. So. Um, she wrote, Dear Jack, with so much love and admiration, Elizabeth Day, P.S. Book Talk Forever. <laughs> we, filmed, um, we filmed some little book talk videos together. And let me tell you what this is about. So when Marisa meets Jake, everything falls into place, but then their new lodger, Kate, arrives. Something isn't right about her. It's the way she looks at Jake, keeps her toothbrush right next to theirs, and constantly asks questions about the baby they are trying for. Or maybe it's all in Marisa's head. That's what Jake thinks. And she trusts him, doesn't she? But Marisa knows something is wrong, and she's determined to find out why, even if it costs her everything. And Elizabeth asked me, when I told her that I was reading this, whether I'd got to the plot twist yet, and I haven't. So she gave me her number, and she told me to text her, and I said, I'm going to text you an emoji, just one emoji, with my reaction to the plot twist when I get to it. So <laughs> she's got that to come, and I think she's absolutely brilliant. She hosts a really great podcast called How to Fail, and... I just love what she's doing, I really admire her work. And yeah, that is Magpie by Elizabeth Day. Um, you may remember that I already had a copy of this book, which I've shown you in a previous video, but <laughs> I was reading it at Hay and someone spilt beer on it. So Elizabeth kind of gave me another copy of it. Um, and this one I will treasure forever and protect from any beer. And then the final book that I bought, I kind of bought this for my mum, but I'm also going to try and read it. Um, as you can see, her bookmark is already in it, little Hay Festival bookmark. You know, we got the branding on point. But this is by Monica Ali, and this is Love Marriage. It is a beast of a book, but we went to see Monica Ali's talk with Chris Power, excellent interviewer, by the way, and also a really nice guy. And it was the kind of talk where you hear someone speaking about their work and you just want to immediately go out and buy it. And that's what we did. We tried to get a signed copy, but they flew off the shelves because obviously everyone else felt exactly the same way that we did. But let me read the blurb to you. Yasmin has a lot to be grateful for. A loving family, a fledgling career in medicine, and a charming, handsome fiance fellow doctor, Joe. But as the wedding day draws closer and Yasmin's parents get to know Joe's firebrand feminist mother, both families must confront the unravelling of long-held secrets, lies, and betrayals. While Yasmin dismantles her own assumptions about the people she holds most dear, she also she's also forced to ask herself what she really wants in a relationship and what a love marriage actually means. Love marriage is a story about who we are and how we love in today's Britain, with all the complications and contradictions of life, desire, marriage, and family. What starts as a captivating social comedy develops into a heartbreaking and gripping story of two cultures, two families, and two people trying to understand one another. Also, weird side note, but I absolutely love the way this this bit looks, um, like with all the different colours on the sides. I don't even know how to describe that, but I love it. Hearing Monica Ali speak was one of my favourite talks of the whole weekend, and 
I didn't actually really know this, I probably should have, but in cultures where there are arranged marriages, the opposite of that is called a love marriage. So um, when two people actually decide they want to be together um, outside of their parents, um, it's described as a love marriage. So that's where the book gets its title from. So very excited to read that, very excited to read all of these amazing books. Oh, I have one more. This is Death and the Penguin. This is actually by a Ukrainian author and at Hay Festival they had a selection of Ukrainian books where all of the profits went to the DEC humanitarian appeal. Um, so the money from this book went to charity, which is great. Um, and also I've been desperate to find a really good Ukrainian book. I know loads of you have recommended this uh, to me, so I'm very excited to read this and it will be coming in a video very, very soon. I'm speaking quickly because my camera is about to die, but Victor is an aspiring writer with only Misha, his pet penguin, for company. Although he would prefer to write short stories, he earns a living composing obituaries for a newspaper. He longs to see his work published, yet the subject of his obituaries continue to cling to life. But when he opens the newspaper to find his work in print for the first time, his pride swiftly turns to terror. He and Misha have been drawn into a trap from which there appears to be no escape. This is described as a black comedy of rare distinction and the penguin is an invention of genius. A striking portrait of post-Soviet isolation in this bleak moral landscape, Kirchhoff manages to find ample refuge for his dark humour. So this is by Andrei Kirchhoff and I assume there is a translator, yeah, so this is translated by George Bird. As I always say, please put the translators on the cover. But anyway, I am excited to read this tragicomic masterpiece. And you'll be hearing my thoughts very soon. For now, before my camera battery dies, thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much to Hey Festival for having me. Thank you to Sky Arts and to TikTok. This feels like an Oscars speech all of a sudden <laughs> where I'm listing all the people I have to thank. But most importantly, thank you for watching this video. Okay. Bye-bye!